We're now going to turn this over to Ms. Doherty about the 22-23 budget update. Thank you, Mr. Capone. We're going to give an update on the status of the 22-23 budget this evening. This is our second update, uh, our second presentation on the budget. Uh, I will start by saying that this budget is not final uh, by any stretch. Uh, there are still a lot of moving parts. It is I would not even consider what we are going to be adopting as our tentative budget next month. Uh, it is a work in progress, but we are, uh, we do want to share where we are at this point and give uh, some information about some of the things we've been talking about in committees and also where uh, things look like they're going financially. So if we go to the first slide. The first slide presents all of the projected revenues as they stand at this point uh, that will support our operating budget. Uh, obviously, the biggest revenue that we have uh, for the district is our tax levy. At this point in time, uh, we are using a 2% tax levy increase projection while we're working on this budget. Uh, so that would generate an increase of 2.9, almost $3 million uh, in revenue for the, uh, to support the budget. Uh, our second line item is state aid, and we are projecting our S2 decrease to be about $1.1 million as reflected here. Uh, so that will be the next year of implementation of the uh, seven-year phase-in of S2. Extraordinary aid is another revenue that uh, supports our budget. Uh, as we've explained in previous meetings, it's something that fluctuates each year, and we really don't know what we're going to be getting for a given fiscal year until after the fiscal year has ended. Uh, however, we do estimate that revenue to support our budget. Uh, we have generally budgeted in the past in the area of $1.5 million. But we did receive a significant increase in extraordinary aid last year. We received almost $2.5 million. So we are right now estimating that revenue for next year to be $2.25 million, uh, or an increase of $750,000. Other revenues that we have to support the budget uh, would be our local sources and interest. Local sources include things such as tuition that we receive for some students that we have attending some of our special education programs. Uh, they would also include the enterprise revenue uh, that we collect from running uh, the after school, the before and after school programs with the YMCA. And it would be some other items. Uh, occasionally, we'll receive refunds from prior year expenses and uh, other unexpected revenues. Uh, they normally trend around a million dollars, $1.1 million, so that's what we've projected for next year. Right now, we have revenue from capital reserve. Capital reserve needs to be used only for eligible projects. So at this point in time, we have projects that would uh, total 683000 that we could utilize our capital reserve for. This number is very likely to change. We are, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but that is coming out of reserves that the board has set aside previously. The federal aid through SEMI, that is uh, something that we are required to budget every year. Uh, we are told what to budget unless we apply for a waiver, which would mean that we didn't feel that we could collect this revenue. We, we do normally hit our revenue targets for the SEMI. It's Medicaid billing for some of the services that we provide our students. Uh, the state requires you to participate in this program uh, unless you get a waiver, but uh, we, we don't apply for that and we don't need to apply for that. Uh, just so you know how it works, we receive about one third of the monies that are collected through these billings and the state gets uh, two thirds of that. So we do, uh, we do work up with the state on that. We're not anticipating to use any of our maintenance reserve to support the budget for next year at this time, so that's why there's nothing there. The transportation fees from other uh, educational authorities, we've increased that amount from $800,000 to $1 million. As we've talked about in the past, we've worked very hard to uh, incorporate other districts into our transportation routes that are going out of district to save costs to us and also to save the other districts' costs. 
uh, when we work together and, and put students on the same route and share the cost, it's cheaper than each district getting their own route. So based on uh, the amount of anticipated jointures, we call them, with other districts, we are anticipating bringing in about a million dollars of revenue on that, which would then uh, be offset and offset to our transportation budget. It will also, and you'll see uh, when we talk about the expenditures, it will the full cost of the routes will be included in our transportation expenditures. So you have to look at these two items together to get a good picture. Uh, the surplus available, that's the excess surplus that we talk about when we talk about budgets. It is the amount that would be left over at the end of a fiscal year that is above what we retain in fund balance. Uh, we, for many years, did not have any surplus that we applied to a future budget, but in the last few years we have had some surplus available uh, because of some of the savings that we have realized during the pandemic and it's allowed us to have some of that surplus. So we have almost $400,000 that we generated in the year ended uh, June 30th, 2021, which we'll be using for the 22-23 budget. You wanna to go to the next slide? So here we have a list of our uh, proposed appropriations in the category groups that we report out to the state. Uh, again, this is tentative temp, uh, estimates. You know, we are still working on revising and prioritizing, but so you get an idea of where we stand now. Uh, our regular programs and instruction, uh, we're not seeing uh, it's about a 4.4 percent increase that includes all of the salaries for the uh, teaching staff and uh, other support staff that are in the schools some of the things that are uh, moving there that, that would cause an increase would be uh, any anticipated raises in salary uh, also that we have some additional salaries in here that uh, were funded last year by ESSER two and they were positions that were added uh, under the ESSER II grant that we are going to be picking up some of that cost locally for next year. Uh, we also right now are looking at a, an increase in the paraprofessionals, but that is an area that we need to look at more. Uh, we're projecting about a uh, $700,000 increase uh, overall in that area. So again, that's something that we're focusing on to see if that estimate needs to be revised. Uh, and we also are capturing about $150,000 for proximity learning, which is uh, learning for, it's meant to support the ASL uh, program that we have uh, in the schools. Conversely, if we can hire us, and we'll talk about staff related to that too, you know, this may be an item where it's either or. If we are able to hire our own staff to do it, then you know, we would not need the proximity learning, but we have to see how that transpires. Uh, going through the rest of the proposed or the budgeted appropriations at this point, uh, our special education budget is relatively flat. Uh, we actually have funded some things through the ARP IDEA last year, uh, but we also had uh, an adjust we adjusted our tuition budget a little bit downwards for this year because we had um, we are looking at what we have currently, and we do have some additional funds in that budget for this year, so we've made the appropriate adjustment for next year. Uh, we have co-curricular athletics, after school and summer programs. That includes all of those areas with its... Ladies and gentlemen, the library will be closing in 30 minutes at 9 p.m. So here is Wilshire Brown at 845 p.m. or remaining time at 845 p.m. when the computer shuts down. Do not save the information to the desktop. You must save to USB drive or email yourself your files. USBs may be purchased at the reference desk. Fines will no longer be accepted after 8.45, so please check out your items as soon as possible. That is will close at 8.55 p.m. If you need to call for a ride home, please go to the Children's Health Desk or the reference desk immediately. The library will reopen tomorrow at 9 a.m. Okay. Talking about co-curriculars and athletics, we don't have any really significant move, movement there, um, but we do have some additional salaries that we're budgeting for for summer programs uh, that, again, were 
grant funded last year, and we're going to be funding them through, or when I say last year, I mean the current year, uh, but we'll be funding them through our local budget for next year. Uh, there's also uh, some expected increases in stipends, and then uh, it's not a, a large increase, but we did talk about the concept of uh, adding some coaches on our budget for volleyball and, and funding that for this uh, for next year. So that's also included right now in the uh, co-curricular athletic and after school and summer program budget. Uh, we also have uh, tuition, which again is is actually a decrease. We have. Uh, adjusted our estimates from last year uh, in that area and you know it's relatively flat with a small decrease uh, attendance health and related services and guidance uh, that's an area that's going up right now that's 6.8 percent uh, one of the drivers there is also the ARP IED EA funds that we received in the current year, which did fund some of our related services in the current year, and now we won't have those funds for next year. So uh, that's an increase of about $385,000 know, that we are realizing in next year's budget. We also have in this area, and we'll talk about uh, when we get to personnel, we have budgeted for an additional guidance counselor at this point, which has also been added into this area. Improvement of instruction, it's not a large line item, but there is a 31% increase, and that's really being driven by the uh, professional development that we've been talking about in prior meetings. Uh, we have not been doing much professional development over the last few years, and we have some extensive professional development planned for next year. That, that's where this is captured in our budget. So you know, that line is up you know, over $300,000 for next year. But it's because we're doing a lot of catch up and we're, we're trying to get back in, on track with that. If we go to the next slide. The school district central and IT administrative costs, costs are uh, relatively flat, 2.3%. Uh, I mean, there is going to be some increase there as salaries are increased uh, for that. That includes all of the school administrators, district administrators, our IT department, uh, all of those personnel are captured in that area, as well as some of our other administrative costs, such as uh, communications and um, things like that so but it's it's relatively flat our operation and maintenance of plan uh, that is up right now 12.8 percent this is also an area that uh, we are looking to do further uh, we, we need to do some further refining on and prioritizing on but one of the drivers of this increase is right now uh, a expected increase in our property and casualty insurance for next year of about four hundred thousand dollars uh, we have not gotten, obviously, our renewal yet. We won't be getting our actual renewal till after this budget is over. Uh, but this will be something that we'll be working with our broker on to see if we can revise this estimate. But uh, we're being told across the board for districts that many of them will be experiencing a large increase in this area. Uh, we also increased our budget for gas. As we all know, the gas prices have been creeping up, so uh, we've added about a, another $100,000 to what we had budgeted for last year for gas. Uh, we also have salaries in here that would generate, uh, there would be some raises generated from there and would be attributed, uh, causing some of the increase. And we also are looking at an increase now in our non-instructional Paris, which are captured here. So that's another area that we need to look at more carefully as well and see if there's any adjustments that need to be there yet. So, you know, while we stand at this increase at this point, we are looking to continue to revise and hopefully be able to sharpen up some more of the estimates. Our student transportation services, we have an increase right now of 11.3%. Uh, some of that is, as we were starting to talk about before, the fact that when we do these jointure routes, we generate revenue, but we also have to incur the cost of the route, so netting it together. So if you net out the increase in the uh, joint revenue that we were anticipating, which was $200,000, you know, that brings this number down a little bit. But overall, you know, the cost of our routes are going up. Uh, we have actually even look, looked and we're anticipating in our budget to uh, be able to collapse some of the routes where the ridership is not uh, where where it needs to be to be have a, a full route. So we are looking to streamline that way. 
Uh, we're going to continue to look to see if there's other routes that we can look at uh, to collapse with other routes. Uh, but the, the prices are going up when we are doing the new bids. And you know, athletic transportation is uh, captured in here. And that's something that's been going up. And the other, uh, the other thing that's captured in here is our aid in lieu. And we did talk about that, I believe, last month, the fact that the amount of aid in lieu that we've been paying out, uh, not only has the dollar amount per student gone up uh, to $1,000 in the last couple of years, but we also have an increased number of students that we have to pay aid in lieu to because we can't secure transportation that would be cheaper than paying the aid in lieu. So the state says if it's uh, if the route costs more than $1,000 per student, you pay the aid in lieu. So although it's a savings over paying a route that would cost more than $1,000 per student, you know, that's still, you know, if you take a 54 passenger bus and, you know, it's, it's $1,000 per student, $54,000, you know, routes never used to be you know, that expensive. So it just shows you how the costs have gone up. But, you know, we have... We're now paying out almost half a million dollars in aid in lieu, where just a few years ago it was about 150,000. So it's it's a big it's a big change. Uh, we also, Amy, I'm sorry. Is there any? Uh, do we run numbers on um, difference between ownership in the district, owner or buses, whether it's cost effective or not? I mean, we we haven't done a full study on that, but it would require that we would have the same issue with the drivers. You know, we've right. talked about. We, we do talk to other districts about this all the time. And, you know, some districts own their own buses, some districts contract out. And the districts that own their own buses, they're having a lot of issues with staffing, just as the contractors are having issues with staffing. So it becomes a matter of then having to increase their salaries and then also, you know, maintain the buses, purchase the bus, the buses. Uh, and not having, we can use them in district, but contractors will be able to leverage their buses more and use them for different things, which then would spread the cost out amongst other districts. So you just have to wonder when it gets to a certain point, is it more cost effective for our stoner? You know? so, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, we, we have talked about internally that we, we may look at in the future by a limited number, you know, a few buses to maybe target some of the routes that are more expensive, but we don't feel at this point that buying an entire fleet would, would produce any real savings. It probably would cost us more at this point, so. Okay. All right, Amy, how many routes are we paying people in lieu now? I'm sorry? You're talking about people that are in the district, not, not private schools, right? You're talking about when we paid in lieu. Aid in lieu is for no. That, that's for non-public students. Okay, so are we paying anybody who's in no school district? Okay. No, no, right. it's non-public students. Okay. That's all the law provides for us to pay for non-public students that you well, can't. I, I know some districts. I guess other ones, like I think they work or somebody, they couldn't find buses, so I think they're actually paying. Well, that people. that's if they. I mean, I mean, I don't. There may. I've read some different things. No, too, I'm not advocating. You, I just wasn't yeah, sure whether you, there's some because I know, for example, you look, you know, some routes we had to shut down, right? Like there were some. I know my kids had had routes that were discontinued, and they had to combine. And at times they didn't have, like, for example, a bus home. So I wasn't sure whether some like routes were just totally not there. And we were paying. Well, people we've had some instances during the year where we've had illness and and drivers that were out, and we've had some temporary, uh, temporary route issues where we haven't been able to run routes but we've been able to secure routes for all of our all of our to and from school in district students at this point there may have been some routes that were combined for efficiency well sake. there were some routes that were discontinued combined and uncombined i can tell you my son's bus home from from middle school the route was discontinued then it was combined and then it's been broken apart again Okay. So, so I think there's been, I mean, I think we had other, I think there's some elementary schools that had those as well. Pretty sure we at least had at least a half a dozen, if not more, routes that were impacted one time or another during the year, no? Well, there's been, right, right. as I said before, there's been routes that have been temporarily impacted for yeah. staffing. Yes, right. correct. But yeah, I, was just, I was just wondering about the half no, a million dollar number. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, where was I? So, talking about transportation, that is something that we're continuing to review, but we are experiencing some increases, but we're doing uh, what we can to make things more efficient and to cost share with other districts. 
Employee benefits is an area where we've been out able to realize some savings. As we've talked about, we transitioned to a self-insured platform for this current year, and we're projecting to continue that next year. And working with our broker, we he, they, we've been provided preliminary estimates for what we should be budgeting in that area. Uh, we have the advantage for next year of not having to budget for the reserves that are required for an insurance, a self-insured program. We've already done that during this current budget cycle. So at, going forward, we would just be budgeting for any changes in that reserve and not the entire reserve. Uh, we've also had good claims experience so far this year, uh, but it is it is probable that we are still experiencing a little bit of the self-insured, I don't want to say honeymoon phase, but we are realizing the benefit from it. Uh, we don't expect that we'd be realizing these kind of decreases year after year, but for next year, uh, we are looking to you know, be able to budget less than we did for the current year. And we do feel that this is looking like it will be a good vehicle to contain our costs going forward, but I just don't want the impression to be that we'll be saving another 10% every year. We don't, we don't think that that's going to be the case. But for next year, it is producing a, a nice savings. Capital outlay is an area where, uh, again, the capital projects, anything that's a, a large piece of equipment or a project would get budgeted here. Uh, that is showing a reduction at, at this point. A lot of that is funded through capital reserve. This also is an area that's not completely finalized at this point. We are still working on considering projects, getting estimates, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute or two. Uh, charter schools, we're not currently uh, fund, uh, sending tuition to any charter schools, so we're not going to budget for that for next year. So overall, our expenses, taking the budget in its totality, are going up 2% at this point. But again, we are still working on many of these areas and looking to get some more refined estimates and some more information. Chris, if you want to flip to the next slide. So our current budget status shows that our anticipated revenues uh, are, and our projected appropriations, there's a difference of $2.8 million of basically a shortfall in our budget, uh, which is, you know, I hate to say it, normal at this point in time. Uh, we do uh, have to work and close the gap each year with our revenues and expenses. It, you know, what comes into play is, again, looking at things uh, that we may have to shift priorities on, maybe defer some things. Uh, we are also looking to still revise some of our estimates, and you know, we have moving parts um, in bigger parts of our budget, such as personnel and, and even benefits we're not finalized on. We might be able to realize more of a savings, but we also, as a strategy, uh, if we find that we do have funds available in the current year, we will look to shift some purchases that we were planning on for next year into the current year if it's appropriate and if we have the funds available. So, so far uh, in reviewing our technology budget, we have uh, identified 1.4 million in technology purchases that we were planning for next year that we are going to shift into the current year. We did this a similar thing uh, for this current year we were able to purchase things out of last year's budget, which relieved the pressure on this year's budget. It also allows us to get these orders out earlier so that the lead time will be, um, we'll have enough lead time to get the devices into the district and get them uh, deployed and set up before school starts in September. Uh, it has been taking longer to get a lot of these items. If you would suggest anything else, please proceed to the circulation desk as soon as possible. The central districts are now closed and we should no longer accept fine payments. Centers will close in 10 minutes. Our library will reopen tomorrow at 9 a.m. Hey, Amy, what is the, um, you, know, you said you, uh, I guess, you call, buy down $1.4 million in technology into this year's budget. How much extra? How much more extra do we have in this year's budget? So, in other words, one point four is moved to this year. Mm -hmm. How much? How much extra do we still have left if we move stuff forward? Like, for example, I don't see anything being moved yet for curriculum. No, we haven't. We 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 need to review that area and see if we can move any of the curriculum items um, forward. To we still do have 
about $2.5 million left in the current year budget that we could possibly use to purchase some of these things to reduce next year's budget. Uh, you know, we do update that monthly, you know, as things come in and, and so forth. But at this point, we're in February. We're hoping there's nothing that is of significance that would throw that number off a, a large amount. But, you know, we are, we are continuing to look at that to see if there's anything else that we could shift that we're planning to do next year and do it in the current year and relieve some of the pressure on this, on this deficit. Right, because I was just saying you have a 2.875 number mm -hmm. here, and then you said you have about two and a half. So, you know, let's just look at it. Yeah, right. It's definitely there. There is an opportunity there to to close this deficit with with some more advanced purchases for this year. If we flip to the next slide, this is a graph that illustrates our tax levy increases from two thousand four five up to the current. Proposal, so you can see uh, back before when the two percent tax levy cap was implemented, uh, we were all the way close to six percent, and then dipping down uh, to the two percent mark in that uh, 2010 2011 year. And then, as we talked about last month, you know, we've had tax levy increases below two percent. Uh, there have been years where we've utilized our bank cap. Uh, when, when it's been necessary and the tax increase has been over 2%, but uh, general, you know, the line goes 2%. And at this point, that's what we're looking at for next year. But again, we're still in development. Our average tax levy increase since the implementation of the 2% cap has been 1.88. So our average is below 2%. You take a look at the next slide, it gives a little more information on our bank tax levy cap. And we do do this each year to show the power of uh, what not going up to the 2% tax levy uh, cap can have on the revenues that would have been generated under this budget. And this can be looked at two ways, and it should be looked at two ways. It's revenue that has not um, been collected by the district to support programs and, and initiatives and projects here in the district. But it also needs to be looked at its cumulative effect is money that was not collected from uh, the taxpayers in Middletown. So again, it's, it's, there's two sides to the coin. So at this point with our uh, unused bank tax levy cap, if you take the cumulative effect of what that would have been uh, realized in revenue over the past 11 years, it's almost $53 million. And that's not revenue that we can go back and collect later. You know, those are for past years uh, that so that number is a valid number. Currently, we have seven hundred and fourteen thousand dollars of bank tax levy cap available if the district needed it to support their budget. That was generated last year because our tax increase was below two percent. You go to the next slide. This is a similar chart on our state aid, and we did talk about this last month, but this shows it graphically how. Uh, it dipped down severely in the 2010, 2011 year. Then it, it did increase over a period of time. We did get some of those funds back. And now since the implementation of S2, we're on a downward trend again. So it just illustrates that. We talk about the next slide. Talk a little bit about personnel since it is the biggest driver of our budget. Uh, as we have mentioned before, uh, we do not have settled contracts for three of our bargaining units, so that's something that we're still uh, looking to you know, incorporate into next year's budget without knowing all of the definitive, definitive information on it. Uh, we do have some additional personnel needs that are being considered at this point that have been identified. I know this has been discussed with the personnel committee, uh, looking to potentially add a business teacher for the CTE pathway. Uh, a high school guidance counselor, uh, three to four American Sign Language teachers for the middle and high school level. Uh, we're looking at potentially needing an additional teacher at Middletown Village just based upon the enrollment projections at this point. And we're also looking to move some of our part-time uh, teachers in uh, ESL high school uh, and two part-time elementary interventionists to 
potentially full-time. Uh, but this is not an all-inclusive list. Uh, we are still evaluating special education needs, high school staffing. These are all pieces that we're still working on. Uh, there is also some impact on our local budget for positions and programs that were added with the ESSER two funds uh, last year that we will be funding locally this year. Uh, it's in the neighborhood of $250,000. So that is all of these things that we just talked about are included in our budget projection already, except for the special education needs and the high school staffing that we haven't uh, defined yet. So I guess I would say there might be an impact from the uh, ESSER two. Wouldn't that be in the budget already? That, that's in the budget already. It's on there yes. already, okay. So it so is, we right. the impact. Right, okay. there is an impact, right. yes. Uh, capital and maintenance reserves, it's, this is just a recap of the amounts that we had at the end of the last fiscal year, the amount that we've used during this uh, fiscal year, and then the amount that's allocated to the budget right now, again, subject to change, and what the remaining balance would be that would be unallocated. And again, our reserve balances are well below what the allowable balances would be for capital and maintenance reserve. So if you go to the next slide, this is not an all-inclusive list, but it is, they are projects that we are considering and have included uh, funds for uh, in next year's budget, but we are still working on other projects that we uh, would like to include and working on getting definitive pricing and, and timeline and so forth. But some of the things that we're talking about are, uh, we, there's a rooftop unit at Bayview that needs to be uh, replaced. Uh, there's also uh, a flooring that needs to be replaced at Bayview. Uh, we've been talking about there's a few schools that have been looking to out, uh, expand their outdoor seating space that's uh, paved. So we're looking to uh, put some more uh, space there at Harmony, Thompson, and Thorn for their outside seating. Uh, we're also looking at a ceiling replacement of, of the tile in the APR at Harmony. Uh, we've been talking about main, ba main bathroom renovations at High School South, uh, a generator hookup at Bayshore to assist with power outages and keeping servers going, uh, also talking about replacing some doors in the science wing at South. But again, this is not an all-inclusive list. This is what, things that we have so far, but there are other items that we're looking at costing out to potentially add to this. But these projects, again, would be funded out of capital reserve. Uh, so it would just mean that we would increase the amount we would take out of capital reserve to fund these projects. So what's next? Our team is still continuing to focus on our personnel and insurance costs for next year because those are big drivers. They're, they're not finalized. Uh, all areas of the budget remain under review and subject to change. The state aid allocations, uh, we normally would be getting them uh, this week, but the governor's address has been postponed to March 8th, so we will not be getting our state aid allocation until after that address. Uh, because that was pushed back, the tentative budget due date was actually extended from uh, March 21st to the 28th, so we do have a little extra time to submit our tentative budget. Uh, we are looking to have the tentative budget approved by the board at its March March workshop meeting. At that time, you know, we would be giving a full-blown uh, presentation and, and presenting the numbers that would be submitted to the county office for approval. And again, our public hearing and adoption of the final budget must be done between April 25th and May, May 9th of this year. So uh, we anticipate holding our public hearing and adopting our final budget at our April voting meeting. So we just wanted to give a Overview of where we are right now, you know, as normal in this uh, stage of the budget cycle, we are still looking to close our, our deficit, but we do have a variety of ways we're looking at doing that, whether we can revise some of our appropriations. And or continue to look at any funds available this year to relieve the pressure on next year's budget, we will continue to do that. But we have another month, five weeks to, to work on this and we'll be working diligently on that. <laughs> 